Oral BPC-157 is arguably the most popular peptide out there and for good reason it has so many different potential health benefits so I'll go over some of them and then I'll go into my own personal reasons for using it. First and foremost BPC is known for its ability to improve gut barrier integrity it's just something that happens with age your uh, barrier breaks down you get leaky gut and what BPC does is improves the mucosal barrier um, repairing those junction proteins that just break down through uh, diet mostly. As certain foods in particular can break down that junction barrier and remember they're only one cell thick so they are vulnerable and it crosses over into other things as well like uh, the gut brain access there's emerging evidence that BPC can help there as you're repairing that gastrointestinal tract and leaky gut is implicated in a whole litany of different autoimmune conditions but on top of this it can actually contribute to both hyperactive and underactive immune states as chronic immune activation can eventually lead to immune exhaustion otherwise known as lymphopoenia. And that even crosses over into potential for mood boosting properties in modulating uh, neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin and this is something i'm going to be like measuring in future as you may well know bpc 157 is used a lot on injuries especially in injection form for a localized effect but also can have systemic effect when done orally what it can do is upregulate growth hormone uh, expression and so and this has been shown in tendons and these obviously get put under a lot of pressure. So if you're doing sports or in particular, say weightlifting, that you've got to remember that's only like a semi-natural activity. Yeah, for sure, doing say circuits, uh, compound exercises is more how our ancestors would have lived. But if you're going to the gym, say five days a week, uh, hitting muscles, isolating them again and again, that is uh, almost, you could argue, is unnatural activity. So you're putting your body, those tendons, under a lot of strain. In addition to this, it activates the gene early growth one, or otherwise known as EG1. And this is crucial for collagen formation in those necessary tissues. And it crosses over into many things, you know, promotes, strongly promotes angiogenesis, the formation of new blood vessels. So this is crucial, you know, with tissue breakdown. Another pathway is anti-inflammatory and reduces oxidative stress is it upregulates antioxidant enzymes like superoxide dismutase and catalase. And if you don't know, I'm very big on superoxide dismutase. It really does protect the mitochondria and it declines steadily but very steeply in your 30s. And that I firmly believe that that's why, you know, in your late 30s, why a lot of athletes' performance tends to uh, downregulate. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. So moving on to the reasons why I'm doing BPC 157 in oral form now is I have a volume diet. So traditionally that's foods that are low in calories but high in nutrients. Then I have a lot of grains in my diet as well as legumes uh, and even foods in the nightshade family which have lectins and lectins they steadily they break down that mucosal barrier those junction proteins and so yeah this helps repair that I do have food in my diet that helps there too but even then say like ginger is a powerful thing that does that but it's, it's very time consuming chopping up ginger so often I use it in the powdered form and it's not as active as the, the fresh ginger. Another food that helps repair the mucosal membrane is sweet potato, as it helps with mucin production. It's something, again, I only maybe have that one to two times a week. So diet only gets me part of the way there, and if you're planning to live a long time, then gut health is crucial. It just has impacts so many different things, you know, immune overactivation. I've seen that people have really good responses to oral BPC with that or uh, even uh, gluten intolerance. There's just so many different things. Another reason why I'm using it, as I alluded to earlier, was increased growth hormone receptor expression in those tendons. And it works both at a micro and RNA as well as at a protein level. So it does have a lot of potential there. And especially if you do a lot of weightlifting, then uh, I myself, I keep my growth hormone levels fairly low. And so that does impact repair when you're training really hard. And due to my joint health protocol, it's rare that I ever get injured. So I feel it's almost overkill to use injectable BPC-157. And so just generalized inflammation, obviously something like TB500 can help there too. But for sure, moving forward, oral BPC is gonna be a stable part of my routine. Doing it just twice a year for 30 days, 500 micrograms. It's just a very cheap peptide at what, less than $80? Meaning one bottle will just last the whole year. And I get mine from Swiss Chem, it's a very reasonably priced 
good quality products. I've been using them for two and a half years. I don't know why I've waited so long to use Oral BPC 157 again. It's been two years now. I guess my gut has been in a really healthy state, all the things I do to support it, but it's one of those things you don't want to rest on your laurels as, as you get older. It does break down, especially if you've got a diet that uh, is inflammatory. So if you like that, then check out this video here on the growth hormone secretagogue MK677 and how to limit the side effects. Thanks for watching. See you next time.